Yatra from Somnath. Can you describe your feelings and the, the mood of your Kadar and people around you and what you expected? As I had earlier told the Panchajanya correspondent, the, the response to this movement would be very big, tremendous. But I would, I must admit that uh, I have been essentially a political activist all my life. I have uh, never been involved in any movement which has religious overtones. But what I saw in the Sarathi Yatra made me realize that uh, there is great weight in what Swami Vivekananda once said, that here in India, religion is the soul of the nation. And so, even if you want to communicate to the people something relating to, say, science, something to relating to physics, and you are able to communicate it in a religious idiom, it would have greater effect. It would be more readily received. And for the first time in my life, I tried to communicate to the people my conception of nationalism, of communal harmony, of uh, cultural nationalism, in, an, in a language which at least to them seemed to be religious language. In my mind, it was not. And the response was uh, really uh, something that astounded me, amazed me. Any particular incident from the journey that sticks in your memory today, that, that still remains with you? In fact, there are so many incidents when I find, when I remember that if uh, the Ratha passed away and particularly the tribals, women, children, old men rushing to it and just trying to touch it. And if they are not able to touch it, then uh, touching the, uh, the road through which it passed as if something sacred is there. They would uh, throw coins and I would, we would keep on appealing from the loudspeaker, from the radio, that not, not a single coin is to be thrown. But that would not uh, deter them. Didn't you ever feel at that time that maybe you were, in a way, exploiting the naivety also of, 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 of people who were... I don't think so. I don't think so because I used to uh, dissuade them from doing all that they were doing. In which some of my colleagues said, why are you dissuading it? Because I said, I, I don't want to do it. And I, my, my approach is simple, that here is a situation where something could be done by the government, which was done by the first government of free India. And they did not, they, Pandit Nehru or Maulana Azad did not become communal on that account because they recreated Somnath. Similarly, there should be no difficulty this time also. Particularly when, particularly when the under court orders these uh, these uh, idols have been there since 1949. You know, but given the fact that your yatra had resulted in so much communal tension, I mean, didn't you think that though you were not preaching anti-Muslim statements, didn't you think that it became a symbolism of something that was may I confrontationist? Tell you, may I tell you that throughout the more than one month of my yatra, there was not a single incident anywhere, yet. The, uh, the, the kind of disinformation campaign that has persisted, more particularly after the demolition of 92, two years later, that has tried to leave this kind of impression in the minds of the people that uh, the Rathi Yatra was followed by riots and all that. It didn't follow anything of that kind. It was a totally peaceful Yatra and of course after 92, uh, some things did happen and particularly in Bombay two, three months later, two, three months later. You know, but in by 1991 but, after... But the campaign against 
the Ayodhya movement and the Rath Yatra has been full of disinformation and uh, vicious uh, tirades in which this is one of the one of the ingredients. But you know, by 19- I, I have often said, I have said it in parliament, I repeat it today that after all those days my speeches were reported in the press. Just call out one particular speech which can be regarded as anti-Muslim or as communal. You would not find it. There would be none. My own views are that this country is secular because the tradition of this country, the culture of this country doesn't permit a theocratic state. Otherwise, in 1947, when uh, India was partitioned, the basis was Hindu and Muslim majority areas. And Pakistan declared itself uh, an Islamic state, a theocratic state. India opted for secularism. This, this was just the right thing to do. And uh, no one, I, I haven't seen any, any member of the Constituent Assembly pleading for a Hindu state. I have not seen it. There has been none. My Dr. Mukherjee was one of the main architects of the Indian Constitution. He was a prominent member of the Constituent Assembly. So that here in India, if we have opted for secularism, it is not because of any other factor other than this country since times immemorial has never accepted the state as being theocratic. But secularism does not mean an apathy or an allergy to religion. It does not mean an irreligious state. Unfortunately, in the last, uh, uh, last four or five decades, under Marxist influence, we have uh, tended to regard a secular state as something uh, antithetical to religion, which is wrong. You know, by 1991, after Rajiv Gandhi's assassination, what were your party's plans for Yodhya now that you had become the largest you know, opposition bloc? It's not merely Ayodhya. I, after 96, up to 96, the party was an opposition party, emphasizing on our distinct ideology and on that basis moving forward. And we came from the smallest party in, the, in this parliament, having a membership of only two in the Lok Sabha in 1984. To 96, just 12 years later, we became the largest party in the Lok Sabha. Of course, with only 161 members. And therefore, that government lasted for only 13 days. Vajpayee became the Prime Minister. He was invited by the President to be sworn in as Prime Minister because he was the largest, he was the leader of the largest party in the Lok Sabha. And there was no other combination even larger than ours. So he, was, he became the Prime Minister. But that was a time when we came to the conclusion that our ideology has brought us here. But uh, it is the, the situation is that none of the other parties, excepting the Akali Dal and the Shiva Sena, Shiva Sena was with us even in the elections. Akali Dal came along with us after the elections, but other parties were not willing to support us. Then we said that we, 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 we reframe our strategy. Let us approach other parties. You differ with us ideologically. Uh, we differ with many of you ideologically. But do, do, do you accept that this is a party which has the capacity to give, give good governance to the country, which is an idealistic party? which is an honest party, which is the patriotic party, which would uh, keep national interest above party interest, above personal interest. If you believe in that, come along with us, because you have no choice except to select between us and the Congress party. And parties readily accepted this, all right, you, uh, we do not agree with your ideology, but we do believe that uh, you have the capacity. Vajpayee ji is the most fit person to lead the country, become the Prime Minister, and they came along with us. So from 96 onwards, we have shifted our stress 
from ideology to good governance and idealism in public life. These are the two aspects. Right. I'm, I'm just going a little, uh, uh, you know, little further back. 91, after Rajiv Gandhi's assassination, what were your plans for Ayodhya? You know, after all, till then, you had somehow... Uh, it Our had plans become for Ayodhya were that uh, here is a problem which has been with us since 1949. Disputes have been going on in the court, not resorted, not sorted out. And we felt that this was a problem which could be sorted out either by negotiation between the representatives of the Hindus and the representatives of the Muslims or then by legislation but not by litigation. This was our view and therefore what we were aiming at was either have negotiations as Chandra Shekharji earnestly did it. When he became Prime Minister, he did organize negotiations between the Vishwa Hindu Parishad on the one hand and the Babri Mosque Action Committee on the other. I am not going into the history as to why they failed, but that was an earnest, only earnest attempt. We felt that if at all we come to power by ourselves, by ourselves, what we would do is initiate negotiations once again or if they do not succeed, do it by legislation. And legislation would aim at creating the temple on the spot and uh, respectfully removing the present structure from that place because it's a structure. It is to be removed elsewhere. And there were so many examples of uh, Andhra also where structures had been removed, even temples had been removed. You know, but there are many who have told us that, uh, that the BJP deliberately misled the Narasimha Rao government that till the 6th of December 1992, your party was actually playing a game of charade, you know, acting moderate but allowing radicals to prepare for the eventual demolition absurd, of the… Absurd. Everyone who knows it knows that this is a false allegation. No one believes that. Even those in the government don't th say that. Make no allegation of that kind seriously. But don't you think that... No, as that's not true. That No, as early as 30th... I, my only approach, as I indicated to you the other day, was pleading with Narasim Rao, pleading with the Congress party, you just request the government, request the court to give an early judgment. That's all. It's a small... And there's nothing lo lost in that. If they had done it, uh, this would not have happened. No, but this would not have happened. But don't you think that as early as 30th of November, you yourself set a tone of confrontation by going on that uh, uh, yatra to... Going on a yatra is not confrontation. Given I the, have, the after atmosphere. all, I have undertaken five yatras. And those five yatras have all been peaceful. They have always been peaceful. And it were, it's, a, it's a remarkable way of reaching out to the smallest hamlet. Otherwise, all campaigns... No other political party has undertaken such strenuous campaigns. It's not an easy thing. Yeah, but in Banaras, you have been quoted in the press as saying that we are prepared to face any eventuality arising out of the Karseva and we are ready to make any sacrifice for it. Sacrif making sacrifice is one thing. The, what does this convey? You put interpretations, anyone puts interpretations on his own. At least from my side, it has always been a peaceful thing and an appeal that everything should be peaceful. And therefore, when this kind of demolition took place, I put it on record within, within, within days of that happening, that this has been the saddest day of my life. You know, the Bombay blast that took place that after the Ayodhya incident. That three months later. That three months later. Four Don't months you think later. that given in hindsight, it was a charged atmosphere that, you know, following the demolition, I don't think it, so. they were inevitable. I don't think so because if uh, I believe that uh, the, the, our neighbor had been planning all these things for, since nine, after 1971 and the proxy war, war uh, in a way started the major first major event was that uh, serial blast of Bombay. You know, by 1996, the BJP, as you said, you know, before even you came to power, you had already declared that the moderate face of BJP, which was associated with Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee, would become the Prime Minister. Were you already aware that now you were trying to occupy a centrist space, that being an extremist would not really pay you any more political dividends? 
once again I would say that it is since 1973 when we started with uh, the JP movement, accepted JP as our leader. It was on the basis of this consciousness that if the country is to be ruled at the national level, it has to be a, by a party which is not just ideological, which is aggregative, which is assimilative, which can uh, envelop within its fold uh, parties which are not ideologically the same as the leader. After all, Congress party was an aggregative party. It, it included, uh, in fact, I said the other day at uh, uh, in the, at the condolence meeting of EMS Nabudri Pad, that EMS Nabudri Pad was a Marxist and he was secretary of the Malabar Congress. About the same time, Dr. Hidgivar, the founder of the RSS, was secretary of the Vidarbha Congress. This was the nature of the Congress party because the objective was freedom of the country, not on the basis of any ideology, but on the basis of emancipating it from colonial rule around this, this ideal and giving the country an idealistic uh, leadership. This, they co constituted that. So this has been our thinking since that time. It's only during a brief phase when the Congress party uh, went to the length of uh, amending the, even the criminal law to undo the Supreme Court judgment on Shah Banu, went to the length of uh, um, promoting Ram Raj, starting its election campaign from Ayodhya, that we felt that this is pure crass vote bank politics, which has to be confronted by an ideological, strong ideological approach, and we did it, and we succeeded. Let's, let's talk about Kashmir. In 89, you were supporting a government, VP Singh's government, from outside. December 89, Rubaiya Syed, daughter of Mufti Muhammad Syed, then Home Minister, gets kidnapped. A few days later, the militants are released, and it's seen as the first time that militancy in that area really got an institutionalized boost almost. What was your stand at that time? What were you advising Mr. VP Singh? We opposed it. We did not agree to that. We said it's wrong to do it. Uh, could, could you elaborate a little bit? In, in, in No, I can't elaborate. It's a, after all, there was no question of withdrawing support on that basis. We did not approve of it. But would you agree that that was really one of the, the watershed uh, events that changed militancy? In, in a way, yes. In a way, yes. But even before that, situation had become pretty bad. Not merely because of that. Militancy had grown because uh, there was a tendency to compromise with militancy. And that was a kind of a... Yes. It, it, it sort of inflamed it. Uh, in fact, the situation in Jammu and Kashmir had uh, worsened even before VP Singh came in. And it was part of our neighbor's uh, systematic plan. It was not merely uh, some of our own mistakes, uh, dismissing the Farooq government, etc., contributed to it. But uh, basically, it was uh, the result of uh, Pakistan's decision not to have an open confrontation within India and instead uh, launch this kind of proxy war against India, whose essential ingredients were subversion, terrorism, religious fundamentalism. You know, in, in 19, January 1990, Jagmohan takes over as governor of Jammu Kashmir. I mean, was your party consulted? Uh, uh, again, you were yes, supporting? Yes, they asked us. We said yes. And, and it was, in fact, it was because of Jagmohan that uh, Jammu Kashmir, which had reached the brink already, uh, was drawn back to some extent. Then there, this one incident took place which incident made uh, VP Singh's government uh, uh, develop cold feet and re recall Jagmohan. Actually, Jagmohan ji was doing right work even from the development point of view, even from the point of view of dealing with the, with the militants, with the result that uh, at that time uh, 
बेनज़ीर भुट्टो हु वॉज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ पाकिस्तान हर बिटरेस्ट हर एंगर फाउंड वेंट अगेंस्ट जगमोहन पर्सनली बिकॉज शी फेल्ट दैट ही वॉज हैंडलिंग द सिचुएशन इन अ मैनर एज टू डिफीट देम इन दैट प्रॉक्सी वॉर you know but by february 1990 the first pandit families start leaving the valley this is immediately after jagmohan takes over by june that becomes an exodus not by not because of jagmohan this is an absolutely wrong analysis because the situation was so bad therefore they start leaving and it is it, it serves pakistan to say that uh, jagmohan met 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 the um, and unfortunately here in india also some uh, some people repeat repeat that canard 